In this video, I would like to talk about something that is not really discussed in technical circles, which is the connection between physics and finance, and perhaps most importantly, the practical application of this connection on your everyday trading life. The connection between physics and finance is actually not that complicated as people might assume in the first moment. Most assume this is an extremely difficult thing to understand because the physics and finance are two subjects that are not expected to go together. A couple of hundred years ago, a botanist called Robert Brown was analyzing the motion of pollen particles suspended in water. By looking at such particles in a microscope, Brown observed that they followed a type of random walk. This was, in very brief and rough terms, the discovery of Brownian motion. In the turn of the 20th century, a French mathematician called Louis Bécalier was considered the first to model Brownian motion in relation to the financial markets in his PhD thesis called The Theory of Speculation. This was the starting position of a journey that ended in a Nobel Prize for the discovery of the Black-Scholes formula, which is an options pricing model that takes into account Brownian motion. To make a simple analogy, Imagine that the pollen particle is the financial instrument that is traded and the water is the mean in which this financial instrument is traded. Even though both situations have absolutely no apparent connection, the motion produced is, one, is, of, is of the same type. The interesting thing here is that Brownian motion appears in many places of nature. One good example is in the motion of stars and black holes which can experience a particular type of Brownian motion due to the gravitational force from surrounding stars. The key intuition you need to take from this is that Brownian motion happens when an object is subjected to many different forces from different sources at the same time, which in the end produces some sort of random motion. In the price section course, you saw that there is a degree of Brownian motion that ranges within a spectrum meaning that it's not binary. In other words, a financial instrument that is heavily traded is considered to be more Brownian than an instrument that is less traded. Another way of looking at this is that a low liquidity stock is less Brownian and therefore more biased than a, than a heavily traded asset like currency pairs, for example. This leads to a paradox because a less Brownian asset should be easier to trade, but in reality, it's not. A more Brownian asset like currency pair is, is theoretically more Brownian or random than an unknown stock, but it's easier to trade because price action tends to be smoother. Let me show you the difference. Here we have the stock of uh, advanced micro devices. Notice how price action is very rough and jagged because there are gaps everywhere. Even though this is considered to be less Brownian and therefore more biased, it is a little more difficult to read than most than more heavily traded assets like the pound USD chart, for example. Look at the difference in smoothness between the price action of both instruments. This is more or less why currencies are easier to trade. Price action shows much clearer patterns even though you can apply price action analysis in any financial asset. However, if you want to make your life a little bit easier, you should pick a more Brownian financial asset like currency pairs because that's going to be easier to trade due to the smoothness of how price is represented. You might be asking yourself if the precise techniques from advanced price action reading will work on jagged and overly rough charts like the daily advanced micro, micro devices. So I'll prove to you that it works with a very simple example. You can clearly see the highs and lows in this chart even though price is rough. If we draw a simple pitchfork using alternating highs and lows, we will see that the pitchfork will catch the action of future price action, and price will create overthrows and underthrows, just like in, in any other financial asset you might trade. In this example, price creates an overthrow in the upper line of the pitchfork. If you know anything about the application of Newton's third law of motion in price action, you know that an action has an equal and opposite reaction meaning that an overthrowing action will cause an equal underthrowing reaction, which can be synthetically translated in a technique that we call frequency shifting. Look how by adjusting the upper line of the fork to the over overthrow, 
the projection of the lower line becomes a lot more precise, almost perfectly precise, in fact. Observe also that the bar that consolidates the application of Newton's third law and the frequency shifting technique in this chart is a fractal bar. This is especially interesting because by looking at this chart without any drawing whatsoever, a fractal bar should mean precisely nothing. This fractal bar in this context mean, means a lot, as you can see. After this fractal bar, the advanced micro devices stock rose about 60% in value up to this point in time. We can draw another pitchfork and observe its relationship with another fractal bar that collides with the center line of such fork. This was another signal that ended up in a 16% increase in the stock value. As you can see, it doesn't matter what you, what you trade. If you can plot the price fluctuation on a time-based chart, you can apply the advanced techniques of price action without any problem. The only thing that might happen is that you need to concentrate a little bit more in order to abstract the price vectors behind the jagged price action, but that's all. Some people tend to have problems in this first part of the analysis because that's when this effort of abstracting vectors behind candlesticks must be done more heavily. This is why it's very important that you draw and write your, on your chart as much as possible. So that's it for this video. I know this, that some of these things might seem too complicated in the first moment, but it's necessary that you get used to a certain framework of thinking in a certain jargon that is, that is used in more advanced circles of analysis in the financial markets. If you keep trapped in the same old su superficiality of internet blogs, you will achieve exactly nothing in the trading world. Trading and investing requires constant study and advancement. You can dedicate your life to study the markets and you will never reach a point where you can call yourself a master in any realistic way. The more you learn, the more you realize the fool you are, but that's a good thing. If you want to learn about these training techniques in great detail, check out my courses available in the video description. There's a ton of information that I collected over the years that will help you avoid the most common mistakes and the not so common mistakes of this industry as well. If you like this sort of video and wish to support the continuous creation of this sort of material, help support the channel by clicking the like button subscribing to the channel, activating the not notifications button, sharing the video with your fellow traders, and leave your constructive feedback below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.